line was not existent. Lakers shot 106 times. The Braves, 112 times. I was in uh, 1974. No three-point line, too. No three-point line back then. Lakers shot 37 free throws that night. The Braves, 27 free throws. So that's what's going on. We'll be dropping those nuggets for you all night long. Let's go out to the phone. Sam, you're on the Lakers post game show on 710 ESPN. You were at the game. How was it, Sam? It was amazing. That was the first game I've ever been to in my life. What? And I feel like I chose the best game ever. <laughs> yeah. Really? That was pretty cool. Where'd you sit? Yes. And I sat in section 218, kind of in the front of it. Nice. And great view. I also just felt like energy obviously was crazy. So, yeah, that was baller. You um, sat behind the basket, which is good. I mean, you got to see a lot of buckets being dropped. A lot of buckets, a lot of just crazy plays and fouls and, like, hard hits and landings and stuff. It was pretty cool. Okay. What took you so long to get to a game, Sam? Um, well, I live in Ventura, and I grew up kind of just watching basketball from afar. My favorite player was Kobe, and I just, like, I loved it. And then I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, I missed going to a game with one of the best players ever. I'm not going to miss it again. With LeBron, I have to go and see this man play in person. And, you know, the team's great, too, so it's just, it was a really cool experience. It was great. All right. What did you think of Austin Reeves? Um, Austin Reeves was awesome. I, I felt like he started slow, but then once he started to get going, I feel like his energy, like, picked up everybody else around him. And, and then just at the end, I felt like I wanted to point out that I felt like we were, like, rushing a little bit and making some, like, kind of – it seemed like the shots were a little bit careless. Um, when we had a pretty good lead and we weren't taking as much time off the clock and kind of making careless shots, and then they kind of caught up and made me nervous. But it was also, like, the reason why the end of the game was so fun. So I'm not I'm not mad. <laughs> yeah, and Sam, your point about Austin Reeves starting off slow, he only had five uh, in the first half, and then he finishes with 25. One thing, in the third quarter, he got cooking. All right, Sam, the Lakers go on a six-game road trip. What do you think the record's going to be? I would love to say five and one, five and one, but I'm gonna say four and two. Okay, you're gonna go four and two. All right, Sam. Did you play basketball growing up? Uh, no, I played volleyball in college, but all of my friends played basketball, and so I love basketball. All right, the but reason yeah, is okay. Good. So, Sam, you saw the guy at the end of the third quarter attempt a half court shot, right? Yes. Did you see the air ball? Yes. <laughs> if they give you an opportunity. Would you hit the backboard? Would I hit the backboard? For sure. <laughs> all I right. do this all the time. I coach I coach at a college and I'm like throwing up, but I'm trying to make it all the time. I would hit the backboard. Okay, you'd hit the back. Okay, would you make it? That no. Maybe. <laughs> to be determined. To be determined. All right, Sam, where do you coach at? Give yourself a shout out. Ventura College. Go Pirates. Oh, hey, that's an excellent Juco right there. Sam, stay on the line. Funches wants to talk to you. Sam goes to their first game, a coach at Ventura. Go Pirates. And she's confident she'd hit that half-court shot. I might shot. have to defend that guy. He had, like, good mechanics shooting the ball. He just no, airballed it. No, 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 Funch. Okay, so uh, full disclosure, John Ireland and I made the dollar bet. I know you guys the did, guy, yeah. The guy, the dude, looked athletic, looked the part, and I said, no way. The pressure's going to get to him. He's going to airball it. And he threw it so high up that when he let go of the ball, Ireland turned around and handed me the dollar. It didn't even get close. I don't even know if it hit the paint it, if it got in the key, but I got me that dollar. All right, so she said 4-2 and two for the Lakers. And it's always cool when you go to the game, you get the adventure, then you see it. And it, it, and it felt cool tonight. It was a weird game because it started at 7 o'clock. Uh, there was a Clipper game earlier this afternoon. So that was a little different for the start time. So that was interesting. Kelvin in Compton, you're on the Lakers Plus Game Show on 710 ESPN. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine, Bella. Yeah, it was a good game, a good win. I'm glad to see that AD was actually asking for the ball. And it's interesting, you beat me to the punch in terms of what I was going to try and bring up. And that was about 50 years ago when they scored oh. exactly 150 points. Okay, did you remember that? I, was, I think I do. I was a freshman at UC Santa Cruz. And let me ask this question. I got that Santa Cruz, and I just remember that I couldn't believe that I was hearing Chick Hearn up in Santa Cruz. 
But is that the game where Jim McMillan, who was my all-time favorite Laker, did he score 50 points in that game? No, in that game, Jim uh, had 31 in 40 minutes, in 44 minutes. Bob McAdoo was the leading scorer with 40 in that game. For Buffalo. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, McAdoo played for Buffalo. Yeah, McAdoo yes, had 40. McAdoo yeah, McAdoo, yes, McAdoo had 40. And uh, McMillan had, yeah, 31. So Mac, okay, uh, just, in, in that game, game, for the Lakers, Gail Goodrich had 35. Elmore Smith had 37. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Well, this is a good win. This is a good win for Lakers. I, I mean, I, but I remember that game. I do, I do. I remember listening to that game because I was at UC Santa Cruz and we were actually going to go play basketball. And I couldn't believe that I was listening to Chick Hearn. <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, March 24th, 1974. So... That was pretty cool. It was just eerie that the fact that the Lakers score 150 on the same day it happened 50, 50 years, years ago. Later. Exactly. 50 years later. It was. All right, road trip coming up. Um, and also, how about this one, uh, Judge? In 1974, March 24th was also a Sunday. <laughs> Oh, that is. That is. is. Yeah. All right, road trip coming up. Four and two. Four and two. Five and one. Three and three. What do you got? Four and two. Okay. It's possible. It is definitely possible with this team. I think they can do it. All right. I think they can do it. As always, pressure. Talk. uh, Have fun tomorrow. Don't put anybody away in that Compton courthouse. We (laughs) will take care of it. Lakers win the night, one fifty to one forty-five. On a Sunday evening, they're now seven games above 500. And if you just join us right now, if you're driving home like MT is on his way to in and out or whatever, uh, you know that we're bringing up just different numbers. 150 points. Yes, they gave up 145, but honestly, this game was over early. It just was Indiana cutting back in. Let's hear from LeBron James on what – wait, hold on. Oh, my goodness. All right, so I met, So full disclosure here, I recently started wearing glasses – <laughs> Cause my vision, it's it's not bad, but it's like I need them, and I looking at the screen right now, I I it's kind of blurry, Wilbur. So hold on, real quick. Okay, so I need to read the screen right now. Uh, LeBron James on what to take from the win because I was I saw, all I saw was the LeBron James line, but I couldn't see the second line, which is it, which is not bold. So. Wow, I just had an old man moment right there. All right, LeBron James, how would it take for the win? I mean, yeah, we know who we are. I mean, you know, we want to defend on a high level. Obviously, tonight 145 is not a high level, but, I mean, against the Pacers, it's, it's challenging. They put you in so many different, uh, you know, situations. But, um, you know, offensively, we want to continue to share the ball. We want to continue to get high assist games, low, low turnover games, um, and um, just keep playing together. And I think if we do that, we'll be okay. That's LeBron James, courtesy of Spectrum Sports Net. A lot of people coming in with a four and two. Big watch dude on the YouTube chat says the Lakers will be going three and three. Uh, Coconut Michael fan, who's always checking in with us, uh, says that he has the Lakers going five and one. Interesting, interesting, interesting there. All right, so people are very positive with what they see. Here's LeBron James on the high scoring game. No, not really. Um, I'm exhausted, so. <laughs> Um, that's what stops me and be like, okay, I need to get home and and get uh, get some rest and get ready for this road trip. But um, you know, obviously, you know, our league is so um, so great offensively. It's so great. You got so many players that that can play three levels. You know, you got guys like you know, you're looking at Miles Turner, you're looking at 80. They they finishing in the paint. They're picking and popping, shooting threes. You know, you got, you know, guards getting into the paint and finishing at a high level. You see, you know, AR in the paint. You see Spence in the paint. You see TJ McConnell in the paint. You know, and those guys, it's just our league has so many great players that can do multiple things. And, you know, when the game is with so much space, it's so much shooting, um, you know, there's going to be some high, some high scoring games, um, you know, throughout our league. Yeah, you're going to have those kind of games. What, like, honestly, tonight, I never felt like this game was going to be in doubt once they got to 100 points, right? They had that 19-point lead. Okay, they got this. I didn't – a couple months ago, if I saw the Pacers coming back, I knew they were going to kick it. Not tonight. Never had any kind of concern with that. I knew that they were just going to keep the Pacers at bay. Uh, 
Yasmin Nijar uh, says the Lakers are going to go 5-1. and one. Their only loss is going to be the Bucks. Hey, Yasmin, you won uh, Fifth Row Fridays on Mason and Honor. Congratulations to you. I saw your tweet. Let's go out to the line on a Lakers 150-145 victory Sunday night. Ken, my man in Newport Beach. Ken, I know you're going to bring something positive. Yes, I am, Beto. <laughs> All right. Three points to make. First off, the Lakers outscored... Indiana, 38-9 to nine at the free throw line. I can't remember ever seeing numbers like that in a Laker game. 38-9. to nine. Yeah, the Lakers had, uh, they made 38 free throws, 43 attempts, and Indy, 9 for 16. But also, yeah. before people start getting into it, Indiana really wasn't attacking the paint because they put up 107 field goals. Shots. Yeah, I know. And the thirty six shooting at the end. Yeah, thirty six three point attempts. So you're gonna have that disparity when you're chucking them up like that. All right. My second point is that taking both LeBron and A D out to start the fourth almost was a disaster. You could take one out, but with a team like Indiana who can shoot the ball, you shouldn't have done that for five Ken, and a half Ken, Ken. You're up seventeen but, at the end of the third quarter. If you're well, not going to give them a break up 17, then what are you going to do? Take one out and leave the other one in and then rotate. Ken, right, Ken, come all on. Right, all right, all right. Here's my last If you one. can't play with a 17-point lead, then forget it. Just forget it. I know. Well, she almost wasn't, but great save, great win. And here's my last one. If I would have told you that I bet $4.5 million Oh, here on we Dinwiddie go. being the second highest scorer and going eight for eleven with twenty six points, uh-huh. would you have called me the craziest man you've ever seen? No, I'd call you Epe. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, appreciate you. Have a good night, man. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be surprising because Spencer Dinwiddie can score. That's what he can do. That's what you want him to do. Dinwiddie with twenty six points tonight. Solomon in Lake Balboa. Save me here on the Lakers Post Game Show on 710 ESPN. Well, I'll, I'll do my best, Beto. Um, you know, I'm tracking with you tonight all the way. When you said four and two, that's exactly what I thought was four and two. Um, the thing I liked about tonight's game, I mean, yeah, look, you, you hope you don't have to score 150 points to win a game. But they did it, and that's all that matters. Sometimes, yeah, you're going to have to outscore a team big time, and they needed all of them. And one of the things that impressed me the most, and it's interesting that Ken brought that up, my, my brother from another mother, free throws. Dude, they made a lot of free throws. They took a lot, but they made a lot. And if they would have missed five or ten, they're not winning tonight. So I'm going to give him credit at the free throw line. And, uh, you know, pretty nice, complete game. We'll, we'll see some more defense in, in, uh, other, against other teams with, a, you know, a little bit of different game plan. But uh, I'll take it. I'll take it tonight. And uh, – Got my fingers crossed for a good road trip, man. All right. Uh, Solomon, as always, appreciate the phone call. We'll talk to you later on in the week as the Lakers go on this road trip. The YouTube chat is going right now. It's a little late Sunday night, you know, different feel, but they get the victory tonight. I like what Solomon has to say. I like what Ken, two out of three from Ken was pretty good. Uh, let's hear what Spencer Dinwiddie had to say on the walk-off interview with my man Mike Trudell. Oh, don't get it twisted. I love the sexy stats. I love scoring, but, you know, hey, it, it's part of being in a team environment. So, you know, every game is going to be a little bit different for me. I understood that uh, when I signed here, and I'm looking forward to, you know, being a piece uh, as we go forward. Didn't wait to curse the Spectrum Sports Net. He's a professional, right? And he even said every game is going to be different for him, and it has been different for him. And it took a few weeks to find the rhythm, to find what's expected from him. And Dinwiddie is a player that when you're in the playoffs, the rotation is going to be a little tighter. You're going to figure out who can go, especially matchup size. You're going to have to rely on Spencer Dinwiddie. That's what you got him. So you need to get him going. I like what that attitude is all about. Here's what he has to say about the upcoming road trip. I mean, as long as I think we uh, keep our focus intensity on defense, we're going to be able to score with anybody. I mean, we got two, you know, top five guys in the world. Um, you know, we're going to be able to put numbers up uh, on the offensive side. So as long as, you know, three through 15 or focus on the game plan and, and have a defensive identity, uh, we should be fine with, with, with any opponent. 
That's uh, Spencer Dinwiddie on Spectrum Sportsnet with Mike Trudell. Anthony Davis, and I can't get enough of the way Spencer Dinwiddie played. I, I remember watching him a little bit in high school when he was at Taft. Uh, you, saw, you had the glimpses that, okay, this guy could do something, and then he worked with um, Olin Simplis, the, the guard whisperer on, uh, on, on Instagram. He does great work with a lot of guys. Uh, Olin is just fantastic uh, trainer. And he just pushes guys to different levels. And he gets Dinwiddie. He also had Rui Hachimura. A lot of guys coming out of college that may not be the lottery pick. They go to Olin and they get the work done. Here's Anthony Davis on Spencer. I've just been aggressive. Uh, I said last game he started to, you know, find his, finding his way. And, um, you know, he was aggressive last game. He just carried that over, you know, being himself, hit some threes, uh, attacking the basket, um, being the Spencer that we need him to be. Yeah, that was for tonight. What about the future? Very important. Um, how you play tonight, we're going to need him to play like that for the rest of the season. Um, instant offense, man, he can score whenever he wants. He's a big guard. He can defend. Um, he played like that. <laughs> Add D'Lo back to the mix. Um, other guys may get healthy. <laughs> we're going to be a tough team to beat, and we get that depth that everybody you know, is talking about um, and that we – wanted to have coming to the season. So um, and a guy like Spence um, only helps us, but uh, we're going we to need him to be the Spence he was tonight. Definitely going to need that version. It's moving on into the playoffs, moving on to this road trip. Road trip gets going on Tuesday. Now the Lakers, the standings, I'm sorry, right? So when I look at my computer, I don't need the glasses. When I look at the screens, and I got to take this off. If you look at the standings, the Lakers with a record of 39-32, two and a half games back of Dallas in the eighth spot. Now, I need my glasses to see this right here. LeBron James on following the standings. It's been flip-flopping so much over the last few weeks. I, I've I kind of stopped looking at it, just kind of just like focusing on each game at a time. So, um, you know, obviously um, – you know, we know we're, where we are right now, but we want to just continue to try to play some good basketball. You know, it's a, good, it's a, it's a, a very testy road trip for us. Um, it's very rare. I can't remember in my career where I've had such a late East Coast road trip or vice versa when I was in the East to go to the West so late in the season. So, um, you know, that's challenging. But, um, you know, we look forward to it. That's a real good point by LeBron, that audio courtesy of Spectrum Sports Net. The East Coast road trip, as the season winds down and vice versa, because this is the part of the year in March where you should be seeing Golden State, you know, OKC, Phoenix. It was interesting the night to go and see the Pacers. Like, usually the Pacers are a team you see in December, January here in L.A. Like, not this late in the season. And then the Pacers have an interesting one, too, because they're taking on the Clippers tomorrow in the second night of a back-to-back. So they'll stay the night here. But, yeah. The schedule, interesting for the Lakers. And, again, Milwaukee Tuesday, Memphis on Wednesday, Indiana on Friday. They'll see them. So it'll be early games here on ESPN LA, uh, some combo plates that you'll be listening to, so make sure you stay with us all week long. Let's go. One more phone call. Hooper's X on the Lakers Post Game Show on 710 ESPN. How you doing, my man? Good. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. Good win, you know. I, I got no complaints, but the one thing that I will say is that this offense-oriented team going into the playoffs isn't going to work. They're going to have to get back to what they were doing in the in-season tournament and playing lockdown defense. And I, I really hope they still have that in them. I'm not sure that they do. Uh, it would be great to get Bando back, but, you know, I, I think that's the only way forward in the play-in or the playoffs is for them to – reorient to a defensive-minded team. And, but, okay, but you know this, and, and you, as soon as you started saying something about defense, your dog started barking, right? And that's what you need I, in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, sorry, sorry. And, no, no, I'm okay with the dog barking because in the playoffs, you got to start barking on defense too, right? Yes, and, and you absolutely. know this. You just said it yourself. When you got to get that attitude from the play in, from the tournament, right? You, When the playoffs come, you, you play a long time. You know what you're doing. The attitude shifts. So you know you're not going to get this laissez-faire attitude from the Lakers that time. 
you're going to get a team that no, should I, be I, locked in. I know in. that, but I don't, I don't know if they've, if, if they've taken it too long. Like, they need to get back into that mindset, and it just doesn't seem like they've been that way for a while now. I hope that they can, like, take the last, I don't know, whatever it is, nine games, ten games, and start getting into that defensive mindset. That's all. Yeah, so for, uh, a lot of people four and two, a couple of five and ones. What do you think on this road trip? Six games. Get into the eight or seven spot if they don't do that. But I, I think they've got a good chance at five and one. I oh, really, I, you know, I'm I'm not and I'm not actually saying that they're going to lose to Milwaukee. They just beat them here, so yeah. why not? Yeah, I. Again, and you guys know me listening all season long. I'm not the most optimistic when it comes to this team. Uh, no, I, of course. But I, I can that. definitely see. I can see five and one. I can, but I, I think four and two is gonna be more realistic. Just Milwaukee is the one that concerns me. And also, there's games that are back to backs, and there's always something that you kick when something like that because it's gonna be a, a grind right. this road trip. You you have to, Milwaukee, Memphis is a back to back. And uh, Toronto, Washington is a back-to-back. So we'll see how it goes. I appreciate the phone call. Have yourself a good week. We'll talk to you later on. Always a good call from Hooper, man. He, he's played. He's like I think he's like 6'6", too, man. So Big guy. Yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Oh, McGee in San Pedro. I was just in San Pedro today, man. McGee, how you doing? You're on Lakers Post Game Show on 710 ESPN. Beto, what's going on, man? Just wanted to shout you out, man. For her, uh, good, fast-paced, high-scoring game. Uh, we needed that. We were going to give up points against the Pacers, but they don't value defense. So it was a good win. Uh, seeing Dinwiddie do that was very important. Um, <clears throat> we just got to keep watching the standings, watching the Warriors. If they keep losing, then we can maybe uh, alter our rotations and alter the rest for AD. That's the thing. You got to make sure that you get a couple of blowout wins somewhere along this road trip to rest the guys, right? Because once the playoffs come, it's 40, 45 minutes, and let's go, right? It, you got to get a, an ability to knock some games off where third quarter, you already know what's going on, and rest the bodies. That's what you got to yep. get. Yeah. All right, so where are they going to go on this trip? What do you think? Uh, I think they're going to go – I hate to say it, I think they'll go three and three. I mean, um, it's also realistic with them. Because I think the Warriors are going to lose another game or two, and uh-huh. I think the Lakers are watching that. And they're going to gauge who they play. You know what? That's an interesting point. I've actually had this conversation with a couple of people. And the attitude from certain people is, look, just win in advance, right? Just like the NCAA tournament. Win and move right. on. Right now, it's get the victory. Don't matter what the score is. Don't just get a W and keep going and separate yourself from Golden State, who is now looking back at Houston. Houston is only a game back of Golden State for the 10th spot. So, I see that. So they're there. And Houston has now won eight in a row. The Lakers have won three in a row. Dallas has won three in a row. So that seven, eight, nine mark, that's the interesting one. But it's just keep on winning. Don't matter about the score. Just win, stay healthy, and move on right now. And then turn it around in the playoffs. All right, my boy. Lakers uh, Digital Daily. Check me out. YouTube th- channel. Always, baby. Always. Thanks, you, as always, to McGee in San Pedro. And that- one date to mark is April 4th. Uh, the Warriors play the Rockets in a very important game. Where at? Do you know? In Houston. Oh, Houston is tough, man. Houston's a different spot. Houston's won eight in a row, nine of their they last be, yeah, ten. Yeah, it could be, you know, Houston at number t- uh, nine. Yeah, so it, used to, it, it was like the Lakers and Warriors looking at each other. Now it's Houston looking over their shoulder and it's like, uh-oh, wait, they're right next to us. They're right here knocking on that And they door. were like dead in the water like a month and a half oh, ago or whatever. <laughs> they were done. Uh, L.A. County Department of Mental Health wants to remind everyone that there is free emotional support service referrals and crisis counts available 24-7 at one 800 854 7771 or at dmh.lacounty.gov. Coming up, a little bit of the mind of Michael. Uh, we hear some Josh and uh, the kids in the back, and also just give you the box score for what happened in 1974, 1987. And MT, if you're still driving home, do not turn us off. I'm going to see if you were on that Lakers team in 1987. Listen, to Lakers Post Game Show on 710 ESPN. Big news, Laker fans. John Ireland here. You can now stream every Lakers game on the ESPN LA app. Don't miss a second of the action with Michael Thompson and I on the call. Plus, all your live and local Lakers talk every day in the palm of your hand. 
You're one tap away from everything Lakers. You could even win Lakers tickets. Download the ESPN LA app. And bam. bam. Download the ESPN LA app at the App Store and Google Play. Post game show on 710 ESPN. Highlights from tonight's Lakers game. And your reaction on the Lakers line. Call now to be part of the Lakers post game show and react on the game. Once again, here's Bethel Duran. Let's get the victory 150 145. What year was this song? No idea. It was just superstitious. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going with the theme. Because in 1974, on this date, in a Sunday to boot, the Lakers scored 150 points. Tonight, the Lakers score 150 points. They get the victory 150 to 145 over the Pacers. And let me just give you the box score of what happened March 24th, 1974. Yes, I'm doing old-timey radio right now, but I just find it pretty cool to see that because, look, when you score a lot of points, oh, it's interesting. But the Lakers scored 150 on the same date. That just gives me that little, like, ooh. Like, if it was Halloween, I'd be like, oh, man. Uh, Lakers, they beat the Buffalo Braves at home. It was a Sunday. And for the B- Buffalo Braves, Bob McAdoo had 40 points on 27 shots. Uh, Jim McMillan had 31 points. Um, and what I like about McAdoo is he had 40 points in 39 minutes, also had 15 boards. For the Lakers, Elmore Smith had 37 points. Gail Goodrich, 35. Happy Hairston, 29. I know uh, old-time Laker fans are like, yeah, I love hearing those names. The Lakers. Now, here are the interesting stats. Again, the three-point line did not exist yet, so that's blank. The Lakers attempted 106 shots. The Braves, 112. Free throws, 27 for the Braves, 37 for the Lakers. And the rebounds, uh, 61 to 40 for the Lakers. And they get the victory 150 to 124. Now, Funch, you also said the last time the Lakers scored over 150 points was in 1987. And that was a game that... Uh, let me pull up that box score. You see, in the 60s, they were scoring 150 like no it was. Other, it was 155 to 151, I believe, uh, against Phoenix. There it is. 155-118. Uh, 118. 118, there you go. That was March, uh, January 2nd uh, when the Lakers scored 155 points. Lakers were on fire that year. They were 24-6 and six in that game. Lakers, now the three-point line did exist in 1987. Three-point attempts for the Lakers, three. The Suns, six. Uh, Lakers put up 96 shots. Field goal uh, attempts for the Suns, 100. So You'll we're... never guess who kicked the, who took the two three-pointers that the Lakers had in that game. No. Uh, who was it, Funch? You'll never guess. Uh, not Byron Scott, not Magic Johnson, not Wes Matthews. 
but Michael Cooper, who's Coop. not known for his shooting, known for his defense. Coop was two for three. Two for three. AC Green was zero for one from three. Now Michael Thompson was not on the team. MT was picked up later. He was not on the team. The starters for the Lakers on in 1987 when they scored 155 points. AC Green with 18. Big game, James Worthy with 20. Magic with 32. Byron Scott, 16. Kareem with 15. It was the bench that was also getting points for them. Uh, Kurt Rambis had six. Billy Thompson had 10. Cooper with 16. Adrian Branch with four. Wes Matthews with four. Mike Smreck, S-M-R-E-K, two. And Frank Burkowski had 12. And that was a game where the Lakers scored 155 points for the Suns. They scored 118. Their leading scorer uh, was Walter Davis and Ed Pickney and Kenny Gaddison. They all had 17. So very interesting for us. So that, that game was in, in January 2nd, 1987. Michael didn't get traded to the Lakers until February 13th, which was a month later. So February 13th. So Michael was on that roster that yes. year. And he won it. they won a championship that year. He got his ring, yep. but he wasn't technically on that team that night. Yeah, okay, so there it is. So MT, was, you, were the, you were there adjacent. So for the Lakers. So again, 87. there for the most important stuff. 87, they score 155. In 82, they score 153. And uh, 1980, they score 153 and lost uh, to Cleveland. So the other games were in the 60s and stuff like that. So there it is. Those are your history lesson for you there. The mind of Michael. It's always interesting to hear what Michael Thompson has to say. Hit it. One of the most brilliant minds to come out of the Bahamas. Eight times four is 30, 30, 30. They have pace for 30 turnovers. Huh? 32. Ah, I knew I was close. An all-around champion as a player, broadcaster, and dad. All the good points I make, you don't want to hear all the great ideas I have? There is only one Michael Thompson. Who is bold enough to walk into a steakhouse with a red solo cup filled with Cabernet? Welcome to the Mind of MT. What's wrong with that? Here's Bethel Duran. I keep forgetting the, the glasses. Pacers coach, a renaissance man? Rick Carlisle was a renaissance man? Where was I? Did I hear this? Pacers got a real cool coach over there, kind of an eclectic coach, because he plays the piano, almost like a concert pianist, and he's a licensed pilot. Rick licensed, Carlisle is? Flies his own plane. A very, uh, he's a renaissance yeah, man. Exactly. Okay. I didn't expect MT to... Also you know a dead ringer for Jim Carrey. Yeah, that's it. You know, I, I wouldn't know that Michael would know that he flies because Michael has a fascination with aviation. So, But Rick Carlisle... Rick Carlisle's tall. Like, and he can fly a, a small plane? Interesting. Okay. Um, Funch, would you ever want to fly, fly a plane? I would love to f- fly a plane. I wouldn't want to fly a big plane, but a small plane, yes. Uh, Carlisle's 6'6", so okay. Michael's 6'9", so that's hard for him to fly. Do you know how to play the piano? No, I don't. That's something I've always wanted to do. You know, like Kobe taught himself how to do that. I you, I hear the word renaissance man, and, you know, I've gone to the – I love going to plays. I love going to Broadway. Um, I want to go to the opera. I've never been to the actual opera. I want to dress up in a tuxedo and go to the opera. Don't, don't be laughing at me, Will. Look, look, I know I might look like a, de- a degenerate, and I know I look like a hobo a lot of times, especially on non-home uh, games. But I am a classy fellow. I would love to learn how to fly. I really want to do that. I really do. But now that I got glasses, it's probably not going to happen. And there's, the math part really trips me up. There's actually video of Rick Carlisle playing piano at a Bruce Hornsby concert. Really? See, like all those guys that you could just pick up a guitar and start playing. Yeah, right? That's always cool. You can just go to like any rock star and just be like, I'm going to go sit with you one night and just play with you. It's like, oh, you know what? Uh, there's a campfire, you know, bonfire. Right. And that guy who picks up the, the guitar, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I hate those people. Um, one more from Michael. Indiana talk. I, oh. So this is the first official meeting between the Lakers and Indiana. And, Michael, we get the Pacers twice in one week. We play them again in game three of our upcoming road trip this Friday night in Indy. So we're going to see these guys twice in less than a week. Yeah, I always look forward to go to Indiana, the home of Caitlin Clark, future, and of course basketball. They think that basketball is like a religion in that uh, state, more so than football. How about that? That's got to be the only state in America where basketball is more important than football, right? 
That's a good question. The only other one I would say is maybe North Carolina. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But, Duke, uh, Duke and North Carolina and North Carolina State there. And Duke. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Indiana because we've all seen Hoosiers. Right? Yeah. We've all seen Hoosiers, and I've always yelled out, Hickory! It's one of my f- most favorite movies, uh, Hoosiers. You know, you're going to run the picket fence on them. I can quote it like no other. And those dudes just come out there and shoot, and they, they run the fundamental play. It's not exactly anymore. Like basketball is, you know, is Indiana, like Texas is football, right? Exactly. So Indiana high school basketball, to get to state is just like the most – important thing that you're going to do it's just like texas punch for football it's exactly like that um yeah so indiana basketball yeah that's that's for exactly what they care about i remember watching indiana and bobby Knight when they were all on cbs and watching the indiana pants like the can the candy stripe pants oh yeah that's right like that, yeah the, the isaiah thomas warm-ups. yeah yeah isaiah thomas and you know uh all that stuff i, I, I like that i would never want to live in indiana but i like the basketball you like hoosiers it's all right. Oh. It's a good all right. I feel like I'm a blue chips guy myself. Of course, you would be blue chips also based on Indiana, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. Will, do you know Hoosiers? The- I've heard of it. Oh. So when I'm yelling, shoot her! Love have- Gene Hackman, though, but I, I'm just not too, you know. You don't, know, you don't know anything I'm talking about when I say, shoot her! No. no. Oh. That guy's name, Jimmy something? What's his name? Jimmy Chitwood. Jimmy, okay, okay, that's his. I know that. Man, I, I am wearing glasses and I'm giving lessons about uh, hickory basketball and, and oh, I, I need to end the show. I'm getting old right now. I'm probably going to go have milk and go to bed or something like that. <laughs> the mind of Michael. I can't recommend Hoosiers enough. Yes, yes, Miss Molly, North Carolina basketball is huge, but North Carolina, I'm also thinking Bull Durham right there. And and uh, Rebecca Wambo just came over and yelled at Will about not watching who's. I, I guess I have homework tonight. I How old are you, it. Will? I am 32 and I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's about right. Because Hoosiers came out in the 80s. Gene Hackman and it's a, it's it's old timey. There's also a love affair and everything like that. Though. Yeah, but Mixed Molly, nobody cares about Wake Forest basketball. Come on, it's Indiana and that's it. North Carolina and that's it. Uh, but there it is. All right, Josh. The kids in the back. It's just the man in the back by himself tonight. Josh, by myself. you're all by yourself. What you got? Uh, yeah, so a couple of things I wanted to highlight and that I noticed today. First was LeBron's shoe game. It's actually on up, up on our YouTube right now. Um, during warm-ups, he came out in a red LeBron 21, but during the game, he came out in a blue and yellow colorway. That was wait, wait, awesome. wait, wait, It wait, was wait. a mismatch. It was a mismatch blue and yellow. So I think left foot was yellow, right foot was blue. Um, yeah, kind of just... All right, now I'm going to ask the old man question. Funch, help me out here. hmm I think Ireland asked you this too, right? Yeah, he asked me that during the break. Do you buy one blue and one yellow? Yeah, you do. I mean, I don't think they come like that. I think they, I think you have to buy one, two pairs of shoes, basically. So you buy two that. pairs of the same shoe, but just in different colors. Yeah, that's what the kids and then do. You mix I don't know. To, to, be fair, to be fair, sometimes Nike likes to do this, like, what the theme, like, where it's just totally mismatched. So they might have actually just came like that. All right, and Halle Burton had some kicks also, right? Yeah, he had like a uh, DeMar DeRozan. He had, it was, it's called a DeMar DeRozan exclusive because DeMar gets all the crazy Kobe's. Um, yeah, it's like a pink, like just like super Easter themed. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, maybe these guys were uh, celebrating Easter a week early. Yeah, and then uh, his uh, assistant coach for the Pacers, my boy Isaac, was wearing the Kobe's also. So that's the video you just saw right there. Okay, so I'm not asking a dumb question. Am I? The, the, you buy two? No, 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 it it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a dumb question. It's not a dumb question. But you're just spending a bunch of money. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, exactly. <clears throat> okay, all right. It's like buying a pair of brown dress shoes and a pair of black dress shoes. There just you go. Mismatch them. Okay. Mismatch em. All right. Yep. Old man today. I am really old man today. What else you got, Josh? Did you post it up there? I know you got some pictures. Uh, we saw uh, saw actor Jason Siegel. Super funny. Is that Paul Weston? Yeah, Paul Weston. Yeah, yeah, Showtime. Oh, yes. It, it, yeah, that's right. They showed yeah. him on the big screen. Yeah, usually I don't, I don't, I don't get too uh, like starstruck by anybody. But by him, I was like, oh, he's 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 a really cool guy. He's a really cool guy. I used to watch him in How I Met Your Mother, and in that um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. He was hilarious in that movie. That's him, right? For that's forget- right. That's the movie I was trying to think of. Right the, now, the puppet guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. He does some like uh, some skit or some play like where he's like a vampire. That, that was yeah, cool. he wanted to be, uh, Jason Siegel, by the way, Harvard Westlake. Oh, he, he's he, a basketball player. Yeah, he went to school with the Collins twins. Yeah, he's he's like six. Really, five. didn't he's know that. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's go. We, he went to school with the Collins twins at uh, Harvard Westlake. 
There it is. Yeah, Siegel was there, and Puka Nakul was there also. Yeah, Car- Carlo <laughs> texted me. And I, 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 I didn't spot him. I didn't spot and him. also, uh, for those of you that love your football, Argentina, the soccer. Their, no Messi, huh? No Messi, but the Argentina Feder- Football Federation was like the Jacksons there. without Michael. <laughs> they were in the suite, and also in the suite celebrating tonight, the one and only Jacob M. Ronnie. Shout he out! Had, Shout out! He had the suite popping, man. Mm-hmm. They kept showing him on the big screen. Jacob and Ronnie was all over the spot. All right, Lakers win tonight, 150-145. Josh, as always, thanks for your help, man. Great job doing it by yourself. Lakers, 150 points, the highest since January 2nd, 1987. And most importantly, they get the victory over the Indiana Pacers. Everybody behind the scenes, you guys feel good about tonight? A little Sunday night radio? Because there's nothing like radio magic on a Sunday night because that's when everybody is listening. This is why we did history. I'm going to go. Funch, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to in and out You going to do it, Funch? Double-double? No, you're you going to eat? I'm going to eat something when I get home, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, because uh, I'm, I'm going to fast until Tuesday when I see you when the Lakers take on Early the game, Bucks. too. Early, that's why I'm fasting until the early game. So I'm going to crush the in and out and uh, I'll fast on Tuesday. And shout out to everybody that works at Crypto.com Arena. Uh, a couple of the other ushers and security came up to me and said how much they enjoy uh, the show. Thank you so much to everybody that works. And also, also the people that just work behind the scenes with the Lakers organization. You do a great job, and thank you so much. Especially the crew at Crypto that converted from a Clipper game to a Laker game tonight, and they did it fast. So for everybody behind the scenes, Rebecca, Josh, Funch, Will, who has homework, do you have to work this week? Yes. Can you watch Hoosiers? I, I will watch it just for you, Beto. I'll and you're going to report. With full, what, what do they call it? Book report? Movie report? <sighs> Uh, I was going to say uh, Siskel and Ebert joke, but you probably have no idea who Siskel and Ebert is. So. Over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Two thumbs down for Josh and Wilbur, the young kids. All right, Lakers get the victory, 150-145. Let's get out of here. For everybody behind the scenes, I'll bet the Durant. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Um, tomorrow, full slate of shows. Travis Lee, Mason Ireland, Sedano, and Cap, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday.